Good morning and welcome to another installment of App Marketing Conversations. As always, I'm here with Ryan Morell of GameHouse, Ruby Ganguly of Aptentive, and I'm Ian Sefferman of Tune. Uh, there was the recent announcement of the iPads that we haven't yet covered and, and I think it's probably important to do so. Make sure that all marketers are on board with what's going on in that world, how they can think about tablets, sort of the macro strategy as, as well as the, the sort of uh, micro strategy, micro uh, what what actually was launched here. So you probably are the biggest Apple fanboy in the room, <laughs> which means you probably know the most about what was actually launched. Do you want to give the rundown there? Uh, I think I'm just the I, I may be the best person to give this rundown, probably, but probably the worst person in general. <laughs> <laughs> so from, from my perspective, it was like you said, there's a harder refresh, thinner, faster, lighter maybe better battery. Um, I, I thought, like at least from an announcement perspective, the uh, two interesting things for me. One, their, their hardcore focus on the camera and people's use of the camera in the iPad, which I think is, the first, you know, the first one didn't even have a camera, and now they're really focusing on it. Um, and the second was the Apple trying to do a better job of spotlighting developers who are creating unique experiences and applications for the iPad which isn't necessarily what they've done before. Um, and I think speaks to them trying to kind of identify what are the actual use cases for the iPad other than being just a bigger phone right. or a more convenient laptop. That's actually fascinating because I think, so in my, in my world, using the camera for anything other than FaceTime on the iPad is like, what are you doing? Yeah. But every time I see somebody out there with an iPad taking a picture. Yeah. But. Well, it sounds like people use it a lot as a viewfinder, right? Because like when you're, and maybe there's some hardware attachments that go with it, or they plug it into an actual camera. But gosh, looking at something on like a big screen and then yeah. choosing to take a photo with like a real camera, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Right. So I think that was more of a use case. Yeah. And well, I was just gonna say I see lots of tourists using it, right? Like right. you go to scenic places in Seattle, and tourists are doing it, and it just seems like. Um, you know, we might think it's silly, but like maybe in many parts of the world, like that's the best thing you could buy just in general is an iPad. And then it comes with a great camera, so you don't have like multiple discretionary purchases around a camera yeah. and an iPad and then something else. Yeah. It's just like, okay. Well, if you think about it, I was actually talking about this last night, like uh, it's amazing how much better your pictures on your phone have gotten over the last three or four years. Um, <clears throat> but not everyone you know, there are still a large percentage of the population that uses a flip phone. So yeah. that means they don't have a good camera phone, one. Two, DSLRs and good digital cameras are still relatively expensive. So that's two. And three, an iPad in lots of cases is a replacement for a television and a laptop. So all of a sudden you combine these like four, three or four things into this one device and it also takes pictures. So, uh, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. What do you think about the, uh, the sort of macro tablet world? Well, so I think we were talking about this a little bit before, right? It seems like a lot of people are up in arms that quarter over quarter, year over year growth in iPad sales doesn't look amazing for Apple. But the macro is that they've sold over a quarter of a billion iPads, right? And uh, several years ago, let's call it four, tablets were like, yeah, that's silly. Why would you have a tablet? Now, Apple alone has sold 250 million of these things. It seems like it's a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, I think my, my biggest question, so I'm still a tablet skeptic, right? Especially with phablets now, like the, the right. 6 Plus, like feels like there's a shrinking world for the tablet. And like the, the other piece of that is the MacBook Airs are getting so light and so good that like, where, where does that fit in? Yeah. Uh, what, like, if you, if you are a marketer today, what, what would you be focused on? Uh, well, I mean, I think that the phone is still the biggest opportunity for like the broad market, uh, but I think there's interesting opportunities for tablets that don't exist on the phone, or maybe are smaller on the phone. So like productivity, um, office type software, I think like, camera and photo editing and, and things that really require like a large screen um, are, are really good opportunities for developers and marketers, um, despite the fact that they're a little saturated, because it, you know, no matter what, like when I go to look at photos, looking at them on a tablet is better. Editing them on a tablet.
now is better than on the computers because it's right there. Yeah. Right. So, um, and tablet users continue in, in the game space. Tablet users continue to be the highest spenders. Interesting. So, at least from our perspective. Yeah, I think if you're an e-commerce marketer, right? If you're up, if you're listening to this and you're a marketer in an e-commerce company and you don't have a tablet app yet, you should be spending time and money on getting a good tablet app because yeah. those people in e-commerce are spending a lot of time on their couches or wherever they are, like actually doing business with you. That's true, actually, and supported by Zulily yesterday in their in the earnings said that uh, Zulily closed stuff for moms, right, and kids. Uh, said that over over fifty percent of their sales now are on a mobile device. Right, which is incredible. Yeah. And and actually, I don't know if you caught this on the earnings call. I thought this was really interesting. They said that there was some disruption in the quarter due to interruption in their ability to provide email and push notifications to their customers. They actually, in their earnings call, talked about essentially how they're communicating their customer base had an interruption, and they said this actually impacted the quarter in a negative way. That's really fascinating. Yeah. Wow. I was like, all right, I gotta write that down. Yeah, exactly. Who's their push provider, I wonder? I think it's in-house. They built the yeah, yeah, I bet you they have a messaging system that email went down too. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else that we should be thinking about from a tablet perspective? My only other thing here would be that I, I think this has become a two-horse race, and it's not even a race anymore. Yeah. Um, it's like Apple's playing one game and Amazon's playing another game. Yeah. Uh, but I think focusing on uh, any tablet outside of those two ecosystems or any ecosystem, anything other than those two ecosystems is a waste of time. Yeah. Yep. For now, that's that's exactly correct. Cool. Well, thank you for watching. Be sure to watch the other installments. and. Uh, do all those great social things like share this video. Thanks. <laughs>